good morning children and welcome back to our online classes today on day 5 we would proceed with idioms and phrases as we have already learnt about our idioms let's check this exercise which was given as homework the first picture is to turn up one's nose or with one's nose in the air the second one couch potato the third one is steak with a pinch of salt the fourth one eat one's words hope you all have written the perfect answers so now we will proceed with the next topic that is phrasal verbs so children what are phrasal verbs a phrasal verb is a verb that is made up of a main verb together with an adverb or a preposition or both their meaning is not obvious from the meanings of the individual words themselves that means like the idioms the phrasal verbs also give a completely different meaning as compared to the meaning of their main verb and also these phrasal verbs come as a combination of a main verb together with an adverb or a main verb together with a preposition or a main verb together with a preposition as well as an adverb how to talk about a phrasal verb as we already discussed a phrasal verb is a combination of a verb plus particle this particle is what we called as a preposition or an adverb look at this example he woke up at 6:30 am strangers woke him up in both the sentences the preposition up does not function like a preposition but comes together as a phrasal verb and acts like a verb now how to use these phrasal verbs they can be used as in place of the one word verbs okay and they are less formal like the one word verbs for example please take off your shoes instead of saying please remove your shoes we can use a less formal language take off your shoes and this is more common in our everyday speech also wake up means awaken go on means continue to understand it better we see this pictures look what does look mean look means to see but whereas look for means to search that means look for is the phrasal verb which has a completely different meaning from the main verb look also it can be replaced by a synonym search now what are the different types of phrasal verbs the types of phrasal verbs depends upon what is the combination of the main verb verb does it come with a preposition like on in at for into from to by and so on or does it come with a combination of an adverb like up down away out back through off or does it come with a combination of a preposition as well as an adverb let's look at some examples to understand that a phrasal verb has a complete different meaning from its main verb burnout means be extremely tired it has nothing to do with burning if it doesn't stop working so hard he'll burn himself out hand in give something to a person in authority example you must all hand in your projects by the end of next week take over take control of something the father tells the son i intend that you shall take over the business fill in for do somebody's job for a short time while they are not there could i fill in for him he asked what are the different types of phrasal verbs children we will now learn this phrasal verbs are of two types intransitive and transitive intransitive phrasal verbs like the intransitive verbs do not have any object that means after the phrasal verb the action is not carried to any object okay the example the plane will take off in 10 minutes here take off means to begin to fly and there is no object after this whereas a transitive phrasal verbs like a transitive verb needs an object 
In this example, he took off his tie. To cough means to remove. And the object here is his tie. So, intransitive phrasal verbs as they do not have any object, they are inseparable. Means they, no object would come in between the phrasal verb that is in between the verb and the particle whereas transitive verbs can both be inseparable as well as separable. Now let's talk about the intransitive phrasal verbs. So intransitive phrasal verbs an example given here is Ivan works out five days a week he is in great shape. Works out means to exercise in order to improve one's health or physical fitness. Here in this sentence, the intransitive phrasal verb does not carry any object, but if you intend to include an object, you have to use a preposition after this phrasal verb, like the example, he works out at the gym. So the preposition at is used to indicate an object. Some more intransitive phrasal verbs, examples, First, I worked out for an hour, no object. Then I dressed up and dropped in at the party. No one found out that I didn't have an invitation. He grew up in Egypt. She will hang up before she gets into her car. All these intransitive phrasal verbs do not have any objects. Now, talking about transitive phrasal verbs, which need an object, they are sometimes inseparable. This means that both noun and pronoun objects always go after the particle. You cannot separate the verb from its particle. That means the noun or pronoun cannot come in between them. Let's take the example of ran into. How is it used in the sentence? To hit someone or something accidentally, Sam ran into his boss. This is the correct sentence because it is inseparable. You cannot write it as Sam ran his boss into. He ran him into. You cannot write it because it is inseparable. So you have to write it as Sam ran into him whether it is a noun or pronoun. Most of the uh, transitive phrasal verbs are separable. That means you can add the noun objects in between the verb and the particle or they can go even after the particle. In both the cases, the meaning is the same. Let's take the example of figure out to understand or solve something. Sentence. He can't figure out the instructions. Here the noun object, the instructions is used after the particle out. But can, it can also be used in between the verb figure and the particle out. For example, he can't figure the instructions out. Call off to cancel or abandon. At the last minute, the bride called off the wedding. The object, the wedding can also be used in between called and off. At the last minute, the bride called the wedding off. So, we have learned that the intransitive, the transitive verbs can be separable or inseparable. But some transitive phrasal verbs must be separated. For example, when we use do over, to do something again from the beginning. I have to do over the report is wrong because it must be separated. I have to do the report over. In place of the report, if you have a pronoun, even in that case, the pronoun should come in between do and over. So the sentence should be, you have to do it over. Now let's talk about the three word verbs where you have a phrasal verb press preposition. So some transitive phrasal verbs are used in the combination with some other prepositions. And most of the time they are inseparable. For example, drop out means to stop doing something before you completely finish it or to keep up with. Meet or progress at the same rate as someone or something else. In both these cases, you have to use one other preposition after the phrasal verbs. I think I should drop out of this class. I can't keep up with new technology. In both the sentences, of and with are the prepositions which are used after the phrasal verb, drop out and keep up. 
respectively. Now, as we have learned the kinds of phrasal verbs, we will now learn some more phrasal verbs with the main verb break. So, most of the main verbs have different combinations of prepositions and adverbs and all these give different meanings. For example, break away means become separated literally or figuratively. Break up means end a relationship, break out, escape, especially forcefully or defiantly, break into, open or begin to use, break in, enter a place by force or illicit means, break even, neither gain nor lose money, break down means digest. Again, breakdown can be used with three different meanings. For example, when I say digest, you can write the sentence as his stomach took a while to break down his food. In this sentence, breakdown means digest. Whereas, if the sentence is leaves and grass will break down into compost faster if you keep them moist, here breakdown means decay or to decompose. In this sentence, I am afraid my computer will break down if I try to run it at too high a speed. Breakdown means fail or to cease to function. So according to the context, the phrasal verbs can have different meanings. Now if you look at this slide, these phrasal verbs mostly are used with telephonic conversations like break up, call back, put through. So these are all the phrasal verbs which we generally use during telephonic conversation. I have also given the meanings of these phrasal verbs. Taking the help of this slide, you need to complete this exercise given. Okay? With the help of the meanings, you can understand it very well. So you need to complete this exercise as your homework. Along with that, the homework for today would be learn the meanings of the phrasal verbs given in your textbook. Also complete page 159 in your grammar book. So with this, we come to an end of today's class. Thank you children.